when I looked at this question, I realized that deciphering it is like teaching fish to ride a bicycle. Solving this challenge seems improbable, but with enough patience and creativity, who knows what might happen. You're presented with the circle, which is broken down into eight sections. Each section has a number inside. Starting from 11 o'clock, counterclockwise, the numbers are 72, 52, 43, 23, 49, 25, 64, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 8, choice B, 16, choice C, 48, and last but not least, choice D, 72. Are you feeling a bit stuck? I have full confidence that you've got this. Whether you're a seasoned problem solver or just starting out, I know that you can do it. Take a deep breath, approach it with creativity, and let's navigate through this challenge together. Your breakthrough is much closer than you think. Are you ready? Well, ready or not, it's time to solve this mystery. Let's dive into solving this question together. And make sure to contribute your own version of the solution in comments. Your unique insights might be just what we need to conquer this mystery. To solve this challenge, let's draw a vertical line in the middle of the circle. You have numbers on the left, 72, 52, 43, and 23. And as you might have guessed, numbers on the left are the input numbers to calculate numbers in the section across on the right side. And numbers on the right are calculated as a first digit in the power of the second digit. Let's look at the example. The number on the left is 72. Number in the opposite section right across is 49. 7 in the power of 2 is 49. This is how 49 was calculated. Let's look at the other numbers. 5 in the power of 2 is 25. 4 in the power of 3 is 64. Then to calculate the missing number, we need to take 2 in the power of 3, which would be equal to 8. So the correct answer here is choice A, 8. You know, I was recently surprised to learn that it takes three contractors to install a new light bulb. Why? One would do the work and the other two will give him tips on how to do the work better. Well, the good thing about this problem is that we only need to solve it for two contractors. Because in our problem, two contractors worked on the project and earned together $1,400. First contractor worked for three weeks and another contractor worked for four weeks. Assuming they earned the same rate, how much did the first contractor earn? And you're presented with four possible choices. Choice A, $200. Choice B, $500. Choice C, $600. And last but not least, choice D, $900. If this problem seems confusing, believe me, it is much easier than manage three contractors to install a new light bulb. And whether you're a current subscriber actively tackling questions on this channel or someone considering a subscription in the future, I have complete faith in your ability to solve this challenge. Just make sure to grant yourself sufficient time for contemplation. Are you ready? I'm going to continue this project management adventure. Let's navigate the complexities together and exchange solutions. Your insight could be the help to unlocking this mystery. And if you have a better way to solve it, make sure to post it in comments. In the first step, we need to determine the facts and think critically about the relationships between parties involved, as well as duration of the project and effort. We have two contractors, we have seven weeks of effort, and we have total spent of $1,400. Because we have two contractors here, our total earnings would be earnings of the first contractor plus earnings of the second contractor. Let's establish variable X to calculate weekly earnings. Our total earnings would be 3X for the first contractor and 4X for the second contractor, and total would be equal $1,400. 7X would be equal $1,400. Let me give you another tip here. It always helps to create visual representation or a diagram if applicable. In this case, it could be a project plan where you have contractor one working for three weeks and contractor two working for four weeks. To calculate weekly earnings for seven weeks, we need to divide 1400 by seven and our weekly earnings are $200. Don't be confused though, because this is not the answer, even though we have a choice A for $200. 
In the last step, we need to calculate the earnings for the first contractor, who worked for three weeks. 3 multiplied by 200 equals 600. So the correct answer here is choice C, $600. This particular test question is very tricky, but through the simplicity. Understanding this question is like trying to assemble IKEA furniture without the instructions. Sure, it might work eventually, but expect a few leftover screws and a sense of confusion. You are presented with the equation 8 multiplied by 13 minus square root of 64 and you need to calculate the result of this expression, which should be selected out of four possible choices. Choice A, 96. Choice B, 98. Choice C, 102. And last but not least, choice D, 104. Seems confusing, right? <laughs> but whether you're a current subscriber actively tackling these questions or someone contemplating a subscription in the future, I have complete faith in your ability to overcome this challenge. Just make sure to grant yourself sufficient time to complete this question. Are you ready? I am going to continue this adventure. Let's navigate the complexities together and exchange the solutions. Believe it or not, your opinion counts and your insights could be the key to unlocking the mystery here. Before showing you the solution, I want to challenge you. Obviously, there is a typical way of solving this equation, but there is also an easier and faster way to solve this challenge if you use common sense. Can you figure it out? Well, the typical way to solve it would be multiply 8 by 13 and then subtract the square root of 64, which would be 104 minus 8 and the end result of this would be 96. But I mentioned to you that there is a faster way to solve it, especially in your mind without the calculator. All you need to do is take a square root of 64, which would be equal to 8, and then you realize that you need to multiply 8 by 12 instead of 13, and the end result of this is 96. So the correct answer here is choice A, 96. Well, it's your time to sparkle. This challenge is yours to conquer independently. You're presented with two diamonds. Each diamond has numbers inside. In the first diamond, the middle number is 2. And then starting from the 9 o'clock, the numbers are 3, 4, 5, and 8. In the second diamond, the middle number is 3. And numbers starting from 9 o'clock again are 4, 5, 7. And then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 12. Choice B, 14. Choice C, 15. And choice D, 20. Take a swing at this challenge by yourself. And when you've got it figured out, share your answer in comments. I have full confidence that you can do it and excited to hear your thoughts and give you some feedback. Thanks for jumping in and happy solving. Solving this question is not exactly obvious. It reminds me playing hide and seek with your house keys right before real estate showing. It's frustrating, it involves retracing your steps, and the solution is often the last place you look. In this question, you need to calculate total realtor's compensation. For each property realtor sells, she gets 2.5% of the selling price. If she sells more than two properties in two months, she also gets a bonus of 10%. In the last two months, realtor sold three properties, one house for $110,000, second house for $170,000, and the condominium sold for $75,000. You need to calculate and select Realtor's compensation for the last two months out of four possible choices. Choice A, $4,562.50. Choice B, $4,762.50. Choice C, $7,562.50. And last but not least, choice D, $9,762.50. Feeling a bit challenged? Make sure to give yourself enough time and solution will come your way. Are you ready? Let's look at four steps that will lead us to the final solution. In step number one, we are going to determine the commission for each property by finding 2.5% of the selling price. In step two, we'll add up individual commissions for all the properties to find the total commissions earned. In step 3, we will determine if Realtor qualifies for the bonus 
and we'll calculate 10% of total commission. And finally, in step 4, we'll add up commissions and the bonus, if applicable, and we'll calculate the total compensation. Let's start with the step 1. We know that Realtor gets 2.5% or in decimal 0.025 of the selling price for each property. So for house 1, the commission will be 110 multiplied by 0.025 and it would be equal to $2,750. For house 2, commission can be calculated as $170,000 multiplied by 0.025 and the end result would be equal for $4,250. And for the condo minimum, the commission can be calculated as $75,000 multiplied by 0.025 and it would be equal $1,875. In step 2, we add the three values we just calculated and the sum of the calculation will be $8,875. In step 3, we will determine if Realtor qualifies for the bonus. Since she sold more than two properties, she gets a 10% bonus on top of her total commission. Bonus can be calculated as 0 0.10 multiplied by 8875 and the end result of this would be $887.50. And finally in step 4 we can calculate total compensation. 8875 plus 887.50 equals $9762.50. So the correct answer here is choice D, $9762.50. When I started looking at this question, I realized that attempting to solve it feels like trying to light a match in the wind. Sometimes you get a spark, <laughs> but most of the time you end up with the metaphoric blown out candle. You're presented with the equation, which is built with matches. You need to move one match stick to fix this equation, because the way it looks, it's not correct. The current equation is 7 minus 4 equals 5, which is mathematically is not correct. It is very simple equation and all you need to do is to move just one match. And the best thing is whether you're a pro or newcomer, I trust you to conquer this challenge. Remember, time is your friend and a little outside of the box thinking goes a long way. You've got this. Take your time, get creative and let's crack this puzzle together. Are you ready? Let's navigate the complexities together and exchange the solutions in the end. A lot of times, these types of problems can have more than one solution. So if you have an alternative, make sure to post your ideas and comments. To solve this challenge, let's first look at the rules of what you cannot do to solve it. Number one rule is you can't break the sticks. Number two is that less and greater signs are not allowed in these equations. And last but not least is you cannot use not equal sign. For example, you can move one stick and come up with the correct equation 1 minus 4 not equal to 5, but this is not allowed. So what can you do then to solve this challenge? Let's look at simple tips that you can apply to get to the correct solution. Number one, you need to engage in mental visualization before making any physical moves. Envision the potential rearrangement of matchsticks and how they might alter the equation. The most important consideration here, which makes this problem so challenging, is that moving one matchstick changes two elements of the equation, source where you took the matchstick from and the destination. This is why each move should be carefully considered, taking into account its impact on both the original and new elements within the equation to achieve the desired result. Once you follow the simple tips, you need to ensure that the move aligns with the mathematical rules and creates a valid solution. And the solution here is rather simple. You need to take one match stick from the first digit and move it to the mathematical sign. The correct equation here is 1 plus 4 equals 5. Well, you wouldn't believe me, but I need to take a shower to clear off this question out of my mind. This assessment test question is as clear as a foggy mirror after a hot shower. You know there's something there, but good luck figuring that out. In this question, you are presented with three unusually looking shapes. Each shape has numbers. The first shape has numbers 1, 2, 3, and 5. The second shape has numbers 7, 11, 13, and 17. And the third shape has numbers 12, 15, 20. And then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 12. Choice B, 25. Choice C, 27. 
And last but not least, choice D, 29. I'm thinking I need to take a cold shower to get my mind clear so I can solve it. But believe it or not, I have full confidence in you. And I know that you can. Whether you're a current subscriber actively tackling these questions on this channel or occasional visitor trying to learn new skills and considering a subscription in the future, I have complete faith in your ability to solve this problem. Just make sure to allocate yourself enough time, think out of the box, and maybe pause this video to get to the solution. Are you ready? Let's navigate through the complexities of this question together and compare our solutions in the end. And as usual, if you have a better way to solve this challenge, please make sure to post your solution in comments. To solve it, let's look at the numbers to better understand if we can determine the pattern. To give each shape a reference, let's give them IDs 1, 2, and 3. The first thing that comes to mind when looking at the numbers in those shapes is that we're dealing with prime numbers. In fact, the first two shapes have a sequential prime numbers 1, 2, 3, and 5, and then it continues 7, 11, 13, and 17. But then this pattern doesn't go anywhere because it does not continue in the third shape which means that the most likely third shape values are calculated based on the values in the shape 1 and 2. And in fact, the number in the third shape is calculated as a sum of numbers in similar position from the first shape plus the number from the second shape after the 90 degree rotation. Let me explain it to you in three simple steps. Let's build a simple table. Each shape has four numbers which means that our table would need to have four columns. The first row will have numbers from the first shape, the second row will have numbers from the second shape, and then the third row will have the calculated numbers. If we just put numbers from the same position, the logic doesn't make sense. But as soon as we shift the second row to the left, you see that the math now makes total sense. For example, 1 plus 11 equals 12, 2 plus 13 equals 15, 3 plus 17 equals 20, which means that 5 plus 7 equals 12. So the correct answer here is choice A, 12. Solving this challenge reminded me of an old joke. The car sat to the plane. They say comparing our speeds is like comparing apples to oranges. And the plane's response was, well, at least I'm flying high while you're down there dealing with the traffic jams. With that in mind, here's the problem we need to solve. A car takes 3 hours to travel 210 miles, while a plane covers 1,260 miles in 2 hours. By how many times is the plane faster than the car? And you have 4 choices to choose from. Choice A, 6 times. Choice B, 7 times. Choice C, 8 times. And last but not least, choice D, 9 times. Joking aside, I gotta tell you, whether you're a current subscriber actively tackling challenging questions on this channel or an occasional visitor trying to learn new skills and considering a subscription in the future, I have complete faith in your ability to overcome and solve this challenge. Just be sure to grant yourself enough time and think out of the box. Are you ready? I have full confidence that you've solved it on your own, so I'm going to continue this adventure and share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments so we can all learn. Well, if you know a little bit about origins of this joke, you know that you can't compare apples and oranges. So to find the difference in this problem, we need to calculate the speed per hour and compare the speeds of plane and the car. The car speed can be calculated as 210 divided by 3, which would be equal 70 miles per hour. The plane speed can be calculated as 1260 divided by 2, which equals 630 miles per hour. So the difference between plane and the car would be 630 divided by 70 speeds of the plane and the car, which would be equal to 9, which means plane is 9 times faster than the car. So the correct answer here is choice D, 9. Are you prepared to tackle the challenge solo? So this one is for you. But I have to tell you, understanding this question is like interpreting a modern art. Everyone sees something different and you left wondering if even the artist knows what it means. 
You are presented with the 3 by 3 matrix, which has numbers inside. The numbers are starting with the left column, 49, 64, and 81. In the middle column, the numbers are 16, 36, and 64. And in the right column, the numbers are 81, 16, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 4. And last but not least, choice D, 9. Use your brain power to crack this challenge solo. And share your solution in comments for the joint discussion. Can't wait to see your answer and share some feedback. Thanks for taking part and best of luck on solving this intriguing challenge. Well, you might be surprised, but this test question is more complex than convincing your cat that the red dot is not the actual enemy. Can you outsmart the laser pointer of perplexity? You're presented with cool looking shapes. The shapes have numbers on the outside and letter inside. The numbers in the first shape are 1, 2, and 3. And the letter inside is X. In the second shape, the numbers are 4, 5, and 6. And the letter is N. In the third shape, the numbers are 7, 8, and 9. And there is a missing letter which you need to determine and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, Q. Choice B, R. Choice C, S. And last but not least, choice D, T. Are you ready to dig deeper? Give yourself enough time to uncover the next layer of brilliance. I have full confidence that you've got the answer. But just in case, make sure you grab your thinking cap on this expedition. We're about to explore the twists and turns of your next brain teaser. As you might have guessed, the trick here is to determine the pattern. And the pattern here is extremely simple. The letter inside the shape is the last letter of the word which represents the sum of all the numbers. Let's look at the example. In the first shape, the numbers are 1, 2 plus 3. The sum of 1, 2 and 3 is 6. This is why the letter inside is X. In the second shape, the numbers are 4, 5 and 6. 4 plus 5 plus 6 equals 15. And the letter on the inside is N. Now it's easy to calculate the missing letter. 7 plus 8 plus 9 equals 24. The last letter of words 24 is R. So the correct answer here is choice B, R. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this. And when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.